All right, so here's a short little video on how to diagnose your cruise control issues. What you're gonna need for this is a multimeter of some kind, as long as it can do ohms. And focus that there. And volts. Auto ranging is all right, not 100% accurate, but better than nothing. You'll also need electronic contact cleaner. I personally use CRC. And of course, a flat bladed screwdriver. Now I'm gonna apologize right off the hand because it's the middle of the night. I'm nocturnal, my bad. Anyways, <clears throat> it's been posted plenty of times before as far as which wires need to be poked or back probed in order to test your wiring connections that's pin 5 and 6. I'd also like to note do not do what I did here. One of the leads broke off of my uh, multimeter cables and I decided I'd use thumbtacks. This is not an approved method. You will have wiring problems unless you seal it later on. So just don't do it. Use sewing needles or something instead and just shove them right in the back of the connector. So to start, we're going to kick our multimeter on. We're going to switch it to volts DC. Showing 7.83 volts. That don't so we've got the key on. The connector is still connected. We've got our multimeter on volts DC, and we are currently reading negative 7.65. I do have the leads hooked up backwards, but you will still get a voltage reading. It's just going to show up negative. The very first test you're going to do, you're going to test your on button. When you press the on button, you should get a 12 volt reading. So we'll press that. Since the car is not running, it goes up to what the battery level is at. If your engine was running and you tested this, it'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 volts. So we know that switch is good. And you can test it multiple times to see if other spots work better than others. Different pressures. See there, I've got a slightly dead spot. But where I usually press it, and how hard I usually press it, which is pretty light, it works like a G. That is the only button you will test with the connector connected and the multimeter on volts DC. So, we're gonna switch over to ohms and refocus this. And that leaves you with a funky reading. <clears throat> That's because our connector is still connected. So let's go disconnect. All right, back in the car. We're seeing over limit, overload, whatever OL means not really relevant at this point. So now we'll start checking the other switches. Off gets you a 1.9 ohm. 1.8 thereabouts. Resume. See what that gives us. 2161. That looks to be ballpark. The pesky set accelerate button. We are at the high end of the range. It should be around 680. This right here. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got a button going bad. But in any case, it still activates the cruise. So we're good. Then coast. Boom. That's a perfect reading. So if you had problems with any of these buttons here, just not reading right or for what it, whatever reason it was a sporadic reading, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pull it apart. It's not too difficult to do, and I left my screwdriver under the hood, so I'm going to use my handy dandy diesel. 
You want to use a flat bladed object, preferably something not sharp. So you don't want to accidentally slip and cut yourself or slice your dash apart, your steering wheel rather. So in order to do this, we'll start on this one. Wherever you see these grooves, you have a uh, pin. So you want to go in alongside it, right here. You want to stick that, you can see the pin right in there. Right in front of the tip. Giggity. All right, you're gonna stick your bladed object in there. This pin is not very long, but at the same time it is plastic, so it is brittle. So you're gonna to wanna to slightly twist a little bit and gently, ever so gently, pop it out until it goes by itself. Boom. On the back side, you should have two rubber tips. Let's see if I can't get this into focus here. There we go. You can see these little rubber contactor tips. Those are what actually press the mic micro switches on the circuit board. So we're going to set that aside, make sure we don't lose it. All right. These right here are your micro switches. They are tiny. As you can see, a lot smaller than my finger. Could just be that I've got a fat finger, but I digress. These right here collect all kinds of different things. Not only do they have carbon buildup from the electrical contact, but they'll also collect dead skin, dust, uh, road debris. Not, not to a great extent, but the real fine stuff. Boom. All right, so here we are. It should be noted that this right here, the CRC QD electronic cleaner, this is safe for plastics. It, I've tried it on a number of different steering wheels and it has not melted anything. It has not discolored anything. The only discoloring you'll see is it'll actually clean it out. So it'll bring you right back to uh, a factory color if your steering wheel is really dirty. <coughs> so what you're going to do with this, you're going to take your tip, lol, bring it as close to that switch as possible, and just spray away into the center of the switch here. This stuff dries quick. So once you do that, you're going to want to get onto that switch, press it down, move it into circles, press it repeatedly. You just, you're, you're going to want to push kind of hard because what you're doing in here is all that stuff that's preventing you from making a good solid contact is getting moved out of the way. It's getting cleaned off of the contacts, carbon included. So you'll just keep doing that for a little bit. And it should be noted you can leave this completely connected. You can leave your multimeter on. You don't have to take the battery out. Uh, we're not talking about any kind of voltages or anything that should create a significant enough spark to ignite this stuff. Keep in mind, accidents do happen, so if you're the type to take precautions, by all means, go ahead and disconnect that battery. So, at this point, you'd look back at your multimeter. You're going to get a reading because this stuff is somewhat conductive. Uh, right now we're in the uh, mega ohms category. So that's not anything that uh, is going to be read by the cruise control module. So what you're going to do now, once you've got your problem switch cleaned out, if you had a bad reading before, press that little micro switch again. As you can see, we are exactly where we were when we started. So no change. Nothing nothing got cleaned up. But there was nothing to clean up. Same thing on all the other switches. The only difference being with the on switch, you will have to plug it back into the cruise module. And you'll have to switch your... Sorry, my uh, phone's going dead. Bear with me here. You saw that button. I'll grab the light here in a second. 
With the on switch, you're going to have to plug it back into the cruise module and you're going to have to switch your multimeter back to volts DC. That's the only way you're going to get a reading from this. Well, that's not much better because that's all the cord I've got. Yep, we can still see it. Same thing on this side. You're going to want to remove right where that groove is. Again, stick the screwdriver in just below or above that groove. Gently twist, gently pry, and then it pops out. You don't want to overpower these. They are plastic. They will break. <clears throat> the resume button is a little weird. The actual the knob you're trying to remove is right here at the bottom. This one is kind of tricky to put back in. It's not impossible. So just find a spot where you get a good connection on it. And then the same thing. Pops right out. Leaving your switches right there exposed, ready to be cleaned. And you'll do the same thing on these switches as we did on the off switch. Uh, just spray the QD directly onto the switch. Try to get it behind the little yellow knob. Uh, smash down and just rotate while you're pushing down. Try to clean off all that gunk. You know, press it a few times. Uh, just you're, All you're trying to do is you're trying to work that electronic cleaner into the switch. Uh, and then just repeat that for every other switch. Uh, once you have all that, go back to your multimeter, confirm the readings. Once this stuff dries off, this will go back to OL. Like I said, you can go right, right into driving. You don't have to wait for the stuff to dry. As a precaution, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, once all that is said and done, you're just going to go ahead and put your, your switches back in. I found it's a lot easier to just on this side start with the resume button first and you're just going to try to find that groove in there. I know you can't see this. You're going to find the little hole on this side. Once you're in there, I'll show you that first. There we go. You'll notice the pins have a taper on them. Basically, that allows you to just push it into position. You don't absolutely have to pry it back in. You got a nice taper on it that'll help you slide it right back into the hole. So we'll get that first one into position. Like I said, this one's a little tricky since it is a, a goofy cut angle. Well, not quite there yet. This is kind of hard to do one-handed, but... The sacrifices I make for my buddies. We'll try it on this side. Here we go. This one, you're going to want to make sure that it lines up up here. Then you're just going to shove her home. Test it, make sure it works, and we're golden. We'll do the same on this one. Same thing here. These are a lot easier, though, since they're bigger. You're going to get it set in the hole, and then shove it in. Test it. Everything works. Final one. We'll get that right side up. Boom. Boom. Come on, don't be stubborn. Let's try it on the other side. Watch me break it on the video here. Wouldn't that be something? Boom. We're in there, test it. Make sure everything works. Once you get your covers back on, you're going to want to do your ohm test again. So you'll refer to the multimeter. We'll start with off, which gives us a darn near perfect reading. Now we'll move on to coast. That too is a darn near perfect reading. Set Excel. That is pretty spot on. Resume. Also spot on. 
At this point, you'll need to plug it back in to the cruise module. The key will need to be on when you test that, so keep that in mind. Uh, switch the multimeter to volts DC, then press your on button. This is all you're going to see when you've got it in ohms and the thing is not plugged in. So if you're trying to ohm test your on button, it ain't going to work for you. It should be worth noting that if you get any kind of reading on these switches whatsoever, these switches are all connected into, as far as I can recall from the diagrams, these are all on one circuit. So if any of these switches work, your clock spring is fine. It's not your clock spring if you're having an issue with these buttons. Very rarely will you have a clock spring issue at all unless you've been into an accident where your airbag's deployed or if you've had any kind of front end work where your steering wheel was disconnected and somewhere along the line somebody just kept spinning it and spinning it and spinning it and spinning it. Those are about the only cases where you're going to have clock spring issues. These are generally pretty solid. They don't just go out. Uh, again, if your horn works, it's a pretty fair bet that your clock spring is A-OK. -okay. So that's all I got for you. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, yeah, we'll see you on the forums, guys.